2021. I think it'll be better than 21. I think it will be. Yeah. 21 is pretty runny, right? Yeah. Like this year, most of it's capped and dried down properly. So that changes the flavor a little bit. going on everybody we're back for another exciting one today i think if you watched the previous video we were getting taking honey off of the beehives we we're setting escape boards getting the bees cleared out of the honey supers and that way we could take them off and get them here in the honey room and start extracting so pretty excited to get started because this is going to be our 2023 wildflower crop didn't have any wildflower last year because of drought the year before that was a really poor harvest the amount we made per hive was pretty pathetic to be honest but we did get a little bit so basically in my mind we haven't made any substantial wildflower in it's three years now haven't had any really so really looking forward to getting some extracted and bottled up this year's harvest per hive isn't all that great either but it is better than 2021 and I got more beehives now in production than I have in the past so even though the pounds per hive isn't all that great, you know, with the number of hives, it's gonna add up pretty good for me. For my level of operation, I'm pretty small. You know, for big, bigger outfits, they may laugh at what I'm making, but oh well, I'm still able to sell it and make a dollar, so. Before we get started, I just figured I'd give y'all a real fast overview of my honey room. Most beekeepers are like to show off their honey extracting and all that stuff. Before I show you all this room, I didn't build this room specifically for honey processing and bottling and all that, but it was a room available in a building that wasn't being used and it was designed for a completely different purpose, but I got it cleaned up and made some improvements and changes and whatnot so I could process honey in here it's 15 feet by 15 feet so it's ultra small I'm packed in here pretty tight I gotta move stuff around all the time to accomplish the task I'm trying to do so it's got to be kind of a multi-purpose room my you know it's kind of a struggle or a battle trying to build up a honey business or a beekeeping business you only you're bringing in hopefully you're bringing in some profits and those profits can only so much of those can go back in the business and you got to figure out what you're going to allocate them towards for me it was do I put it back towards the bees and try to build the bees or do I put it towards a like a facility and stuff to handle the honey and the extracting and all that and basically what it came down to in my mind was you know every year a honey crop is not guaranteed it's like farming you put all your work and effort into a short time frame during the year to harvest and get your crop but it's no guarantee there's a whole lot of stuff that can go wrong and so far since I've been beekeeping more times often than not, 
things do go wrong to reduce your yield or do away with it completely. So when I started, I decided that I was going to put all the what money I could back into building the bees and the infrastructure, just stuff like that. Mostly equipment, you know, beehive, pallets, boxes, frames, lids, all the woodenware, trying to build up my bee numbers. And then the idea was someday putting, then I could transfer my inputs into a, a true facility someday. So, all that being said is just me trying to say, this is way smaller than I need, but I'm just trying to make it work, you know, now for the time being. So here's your first glance. Like I said, 15 feet by 15 feet. I made some changes to clean it up and whatnot. Got it insulated. Pardon the color shade of this video. It's probably tinted yellow because of the light reflecting off the yellow insulation. But most of what you see in here, I've probably done myself. Besides that rack and the sink, I bought those. Uh, some of the electrical is already done in here, like the light and some of the plugs, but I added on this electrical here. That's for the water heater and this forced air heater right there. I did all the electrical for that, and then I added in these plugs because I needed plugs that could pull more amps. Like I said, I wired in the water heater over here. Bought the sink. Got a good deal on it. Bought the hand washing sink. Yeah, let's just kind of go around the room. So I mentioned earlier, it's also my honey bottling room. So I've got two bottling tanks. They're the Max Ant. They're rated for to hold 40 gallons of honey. But uh, unless something's up with my buckets, I can fit nine five gallon buckets of honey in there. So that's 45 gallons. I think it's because once a certain amount of weight gets in there, the bottom part of the tank will pop down and that gives it some more volume. But these are water jacketed with the heating element down there. That way you can warm up the honey a bit to let it flow better when you're bottling. And if the honey gets starts to get crystallized, you can put it in there and warm it up, reliquify it real easy. Really liking those tanks. And I've got two because in the past I've usually had two crops of honey, wildflower and cotton blossom, so I can have it in both tanks and bottle either one as I need it. Got a wall mounted air conditioner because it does get pretty hot in here. In this rack, you can get these at Sam's. That's where I got mine. Holds all my bottles, bottling supplies like lids, bottles, and then once I do have it bottled, I store it all there. And we come in here and grab it for farmers markets usually. And getting on to the three bay sink. I think this thing's about eight foot long when you include the drain pans. Got to have a compartment to wash, rinse, and then sanitize if you're doing anything with food manufacturing. Then we got our water heater, the on demand or tankless, whatever you want to call it. I did all the plumbing for that. Plumbed in my sinks. Then I made my paper towel dispenser here out of stainless. And I got all my buckets. I'm still a part of the bucket brigade. If, if y'all are beekeepers or whatnot, y'all know what that means. And then Start down here. This will be my, I guess you'd call it my honey processing line 
or table, whatever you want to call it. I'm using it this year a little different than what I designed it for. I did make this thing. I found the, the framework. These legs and these sideboards here were already made. So I bought the framework and then made all these inserts. This funnel for the cappings, these transitions, another funnel for uncapping. And this will be like a drip holding tank for frames. So I made all those. So what it was designed for was this spot here. I have a oh the Maxant chain uncapper would sit over that. And as you uncap, all the cappings would go into there into a bucket sitting under that funnel. And then I could dump the bucket into the that little funnel there going into my capping spinner. So that was the plan of it. But this year, if y'all know anything about honey extracting, and if you use a chain uncapper for them to really work properly, the comb needs to be built out wider than the frame. Then the capper can take up, take off all that wax. So like this year, we had a little, you know, a decent flow, but it wasn't very strong and it didn't last long enough. And the bees weren't able, they really didn't draw out many foundations. So I had 10 frames in my box the whole time. And they never really filled out their boxes enough for me to go back and take a frame out and space it nine so they could draw them out wider. So like, here's what I'm talking about. Got this beautiful frame of capped honey. As you can see, it's only as wide as the frame is. So a chain uncapper, you know, would probably get it, but I'd be eating into my end bars and then it's gonna destroy what, wouldn't destroy, but it's gonna really damage the what comb I have there and I'm a huge proponent of saving that comb as best as I can because where we're at the flows tend to be kind of short and they're we usually only get them if we get some rain so the most efficient way to capture all that honey is to have combs on the hive and not foundations so get a little sidetracked and rambling a little bit but like I said, chain uncapper would sit here, but I'm gonna have to hand uncap instead, I think. And I can still use the funnel to put all the cappings in the bucket, and I'm still gonna dump them into the spinner. And these bars here, those are, I kinda call them deboxing bars or unboxing bars. I'll set my honey super on top of those, and those will pop the frames up out of the box where they're easier to grab. And then once they're uncapped, then like I said, this whole tank here can hold my frames. And they can sit there and drip. And then the, as you can see here, maybe that tank is sloped. It's shallow down here and then it gets deeper down there. So then the honey can drip down there out that hole. And it'll go into a bucket. I've got one of the pale filters in there. And then, you know, as we uncap, we can just push these frames along. The ears slide right here on the sides. And they can go all the way down, I think. I don't really have to do the math or something, but I think I designed it to hold like 40 or 60 frames because my idea is to have, I actually do have in the storage right now, a Daydant 20 frame extractor along with a clarifying tank and a honey pump. 
and I was thinking that that could up my capacity per day quite a bit but you know like I mentioned with the skinny frames and whatnot having to uncap by hand I'm just going to stick with my man lake nine frame extractor for this holes nine deeps or 18 mediums or shallows I prefer to run everything in deeps that way everything's the same and all the frames are exchangeable and whatnot and then yes yeah, where the honey's gonna be coming out got the old strainer like a lot of people use this first one is a coarse filter and then down there is a much finer filter and then I'll be once I fill up my bottling tank then I'll just be storing it in five gallon buckets and I put stretch wrap around the lids to keep those on nice and secure and then they'll go into storage so like I said, I tried to do a pretty fast and brief overview. In the future I may or may not do a more detailed video on what's what all's in here and you know, all that good stuff. So before we get into extracting, here's the box supers we took off. Y'all can see they're pretty they're very free of bees. Escapes did a pretty good job and then driving down the road blew out all, most of those robber bees pretty well especially if you drive slow you know under 30 or 25 they tend to fly out on their own I did have some issues with some clusters of bees in the supers and I figured it might be a problem because in the previous video I mentioned when we were putting the escapes on it was right at three weeks after I'd put the excluders in there. Shook everybody down out of the honey supers to get the queens out of there and then put in a queen excluder. It was right at three weeks, so that means the there was some brood in there that had just emerged, so that means baby bees up there. And, you know, like it sounds, they are babies, so they're kind of like, they're you know they don't know exactly what's going on and they're not smart enough to leave the super with everybody else they just kind of hang out there and then you take it off and they cluster up usually in the corner of a box or something so I had a shot back handy and once when I ran across a cluster of bees I would just suck them up before I brought it here in the honey room but other than that the boxes are pretty clear got 33 boxes in here and what I like to do I put them in by these furniture moving carts from Harbor Freight and then I just turn some telescoping lids upside down and use those kind of like a drip tray just in case any honey drips out of the boxes while they're sitting here but Using the skateboards, there's really not any honey dripped out. But it does keep anything off the floor. So, yeah. That's about all I can think of to cover. I'm sure, I'm sure there's tons of stuff I didn't cover that maybe somebody out there wants to know about. But that's about all I can think of. So let's get into some honey extraction. This one's heavy. Let's see how this D-boxer works. Found the spot. Beautiful. That just forces the frames up. It makes these ears of the frames easily accessible. Just makes them easier to pick up. Look at that. Beautiful cat tongue. Now these are all the uncapping tools I've used in the past. This is a capping scratcher or uncapping fork. It's got the straight tines on it. I've really grown to like that the best and I've started 
or in years past I've used it exclusively and some people use it to just scratch the cappings open kind of like that but I what I like to do is kind of run them under there and just peel them all off like that get the end started and you can just run kind of have upward pressure on the tines so you don't dig too deep and that exposes all the cells and all the honey can flow out of there and then this tool here is like a combo of a uncapping fork and I don't know what else but this one you drag it the tines pull up the cappings I can show you better than I can explain it. It's basically the same process. But the only thing is it leaves them on the frame. That's the downside that I don't like about it. And this thing can get clogged up with wax and you have to get it all out of there. I liked it, it just doesn't work consistently. And then, what I'm gonna try a little bit of this year and see how it works, is a capping's punch roller. It's got these spines and they're just designed to puncture these cappings to where the honey can come out. I saw Nathan at Duck River Honey using these and he said he really liked it. So I figured I'd give them a whirl very cheap so if they do a good job at all they'll easily pay it for themselves so the downside that I've heard is that they will these spines can get clogged up with wax and honey so I'll end up taking it to the sink and trying to wash it out I don't know how well it'll wash out or how well it won't we'll just have to see but the key is to use the right amount of pressure, I think, and not just force it down in there and just clog it up real fast. Kind of like, reminds me of an aerator going over a golf course or something. I'm gonna try running it both directions just to try to get all the cappings punched out. As you can tell of the three, that's the fastest by far if anybody's watching who doesn't know uncapping frames is easily the slowest process of extracting honey it's the big bottleneck so we got that box Got a couple boxes uncapped. Really hoping that capping's punch works and lets all the honey come out because that's way faster than what I've been doing. And got these four frames extracted. They didn't have much honey in them at all, but they did prime the bottom of the tank. And we got our first drops of honey coming out for 2023. Let me get those out and get loaded up with some of these full frames and then we'll see what happens one thing that really annoys me about this extractor is the lid won't stay up so to load and unload I take it out like that gonna, in these brood combs kind of going to have lots of pollen in there I don't know if y'all can see that, but you know, some of that's gonna little bitty microscopic pieces are probably gonna fling out getting the honey, which is a good thing to help with people's allergies and whatnot. We've got honey flowing now.
got uncapped frames here dripping it's going in the channel and going down there in a bucket so it looks like my little small scale line here is primed and ready to go Oh, we are calling it a day. Got quite a bit done. Had the misses out here helping me in that shirt. Helped speed things along. Made it go more than twice as fast as I was doing it on my own. Got these two carts of supers here done. I'll, we'll finish up these those 11 tomorrow. Got the extractor tilted up, draining out what's in there. We got a good bit from the drip tank. It's about right there. So I'm putting the cappings in the capping spinner. What that's doing, that's separating the honey out of the wax cappings. Get good clean honey out of it. And then the wax cappings that are in there are gonna be nice and dry. And make it a whole lot easier to melt those down into beeswax. So, yeah, we're calling in a day, gonna finish up tomorrow, so. I guess I'll bring y'all back then. Y'all can see the aftermath.
Well, as y'all just saw, we got all the empty supers put up in the reefer and I'm gonna get them to blow freezing for a few hours to keep all the wax moth out of there. That'll kill all the eggs and if there's any larvae that have hatched in there, I'm gonna wipe them out real easy and keep those combs nice and clean and free of wax moth damage. All done with our first round of extracting. As y'all saw, we got our tank plumb full. These are the buckets. Ended up with four buckets, more than the tank would hold. The tank holds, in my experience, it'll hold nine buckets. It's rated for eight at 40 gallons, but it, I fit nine buckets in there. So we got, so out of this round, we got nine buckets, plus we bottled 120 pounds worth of honey. So that's two buckets, so that's 11 total, plus these four here would be 15 buckets. And then there was just a little bit left. It'll go towards the next round of extraction. Got our extracting line all wiped down and clean. Got the extractor clean, sprayed out and fairly clean. Got the floor fairly clean. Still got some wax and propolis on there that I'll have to get up when I do a deep clean when we're done with all the extracting, but be headed out tomorrow to set 48 more escape boards. So a couple of days after that, I'll be bringing in another load of supers for extraction. So got two more two more big rounds left and then the third round is going to be like pretty small be like 15 hives worth or something like that so needing to get it done because bees going to need to be going out on the, the next crop which will be cotton and then if i can find any and i got another surprise crop for y'all I'm gonna keep that a secret till it comes out on the video, so y'all stay tuned. But I guess that's gonna wrap it up for this extraction video. So if y'all watch till the end, thank you very much. Hope y'all don't beat me up too much on my extracting room, but it uh, it gets the job done. I can say that much, and that's what it's meant to do, I guess. So until someday when I can upgrade, this is gonna have to do so. Guess we'll, it's time to head out. We'll see y'all on the next one.